direct. It's incredible uh, how much emphasis we place on a US lead, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, today was the fourth slowest day of 2012 on the Australian market, just $2.6 billion being traded. So one of the slowest days of the year so far. And as you mentioned, uh, we were off to a pretty good start and really playing catch up on Friday session where we did see the Australian market selling off, but the US market not following in that overnight session. So originally the Australian market was off to a good start, but things did turn once we found out that the US stock market, options market would be closed overnight and we saw that sell-off in the US futures happening. In fact, if we have a look at the US futures, down 0.4%, so a lot of jitters over Hurricane Sandy at the moment. Having said that, if we have a look around the market, it was uh, it was the property sector which was uh, the best performing, while the healthcare sector actually sold off today. So it was hard to detect any risk on or risk off themes. We have a look at individual stocks, lots of strong performances though, and I guess notable are some 52-week highs that we saw for the likes of Credit Corp, as well as Flexi Group, which reached a one-year high today. But altogether, hard to read anything into this market. In the end, up just 0.1% after a good start. And at $2.6 billion being traded, that's the fourth slowest day of 2012. Elders looking to sell its rural services business and also its uh, automotive manufacturing business. What's it going to have left? talk about a company that's over leveraged and this is a company with a lot of debt and recently what we've heard from the company are cost initiatives trying to look at cost savings and reduce its expenses as well as asset sales to try and reduce that debt burden but it does look like the company which has been the center of some takeover speculation has decided that perhaps selling off parts of its business may achieve a better price than selling the company as a whole we know that rural co is interested in uh, elders it's got a 12.04% stake. Rural Co today coming out to say that it's disappointed by Elders move uh, to try and sell off the largest part of its business which is the rural services area. Now this is the area that looks at the marketing services, the financial services to farmers and this is the largest part of Elders business. We already know that it's trying to sell off its uh, future stake or the automobile business which it would have left it as a pure re uh, rural services business because we know that the forestry business has pretty much been sold off as well. So the announcement today really talking about selling off uh, elders as a sum of parts rather than as a whole and I guess what the market is hoping for is a better price than what would have been achieved by a possible takeover bid uh, by Rural Co. So watching possible corporate activity for elders at this stage and of course Rural Co being the front runner for that and also the price that it gets for its assets and whether it is going to be more than uh, selling off the company as a whole. Garden Leisure today. This is the company that owns different entertainment franchises including theme parks and it's always an interesting one in terms of discretionary spending and it's not doing too badly. We did see a quarterly update coming through from Ardent Leisure and we did see the stock up by 1.1%. We are seeing some positive trends coming through from the areas like theme parks. We know that uh, it owns Dreamworld as well as Whitewater World um, and a number of other theme parks. And it does look like growth of 5.4% for the first quarter after what's been quite a difficult time, especially in Queensland. We've also seen the, uh, the fitness centres doing well. So if we have a look at Good Life, we saw revenue up by 4% for that first quarter. And one of the things that we've seen from Ardent Leisure is a shift in its portfolio mix to some of the high growth areas. And the fitness centres have been doing quite well, so we have seen a number of acquisitions in that area uh, recently. Uh, including Fitness First, the South Australian portfolio. Main event is something that we don't have in Australia, but over in the US, it's a family entertainment <coughs> centre which has things like uh, sometimes rock climbing or bowling, um, also uh, arcade games in that particular uh, centre. But they've been doing extremely well, and this has been a high growth area for Ardent Leisure. In fact, if we have a look at revenue for the quarter, up by about 25%. On the flip side, the bowling area, the marine area, looking pretty flat there, but all up a positive in terms of discretionary spend, some of those areas which have been traditionally quite weak over the last few years, especially theme parks, starting to show a positive uh, trend there, and we, we do see Ardent Leisure up by 1.1%. Uh, Simon, this is